Okay, so here we begin this course and as we begin it is uh, my duty to welcome you students to this beautiful course of adaptive signal processing. Actually it is a course on adaptive filter, through adaptive filter algorithm and analysis, you know. This course, even though there are plenty of books on this subject, the principal book for this course is this, by Simon Hekin. And then another book also is a bit handy for a particular variety of adaptive filter called LMS, for that this book is better, adaptive filters by an ex friend of mine, by a friend of mine with whom I worked for a while earlier. His name is, is an Iranian, his name is Farhang Borojeni. It is a big name, we call him Farhang and both are Prentisol books. In fact, the first one is available as Prentisol of India publication. Okay. Now, you know what is adaptive signal processing? I tell you that this course, which basically will try to de derive adaptive filters. So, the adaptive filters, I mean, I would say that they are practically even more useful, even they occur more frequently than uh, so called you know low pass band pass filters. There is a filters that have steady I mean, fixed coefficient and designed towards for all to have a particular shape and all. Okay, because these adaptive filters enable the system to adjust to a changing environment, changing statistical condition and all that, okay, which normal digital filters like a bandpass filter, butterworth band, band, uh, lupus filter or a HMEC Vice or high pass filter or things like that cannot, because once, I mean they are once you design the filter, the coefficients are fixed once for all. You implement the filter, its frequency characteristic will never change. So, it will remain fixed, time invariant. Okay. But most often um, uh, in practice, we come across situations where uh, the signal or system environment is a kind of fluctuating or the statistics involved of the processes of the random signals that also changes from time to time. So, in that case you cannot live with just a filter which was designed once for all. You have to make arrangement for adjusting the filter parameters to suit to the changing needs and that is what an adaptive filter does. Okay, adaptive filter actually I will give some basic examples and adaptive filter what it does is this that suppose there is a input x n, what you do? You pass it through a filter, I mean for this course we will be considering only an F I R filter, not I I R filter, I, F I R adaptive filter is only very famous and they guarantee stability and all. Okay, you pass it through as a filter w 0 dot 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 w p, so p plus 1 coefficient. So, you get a output y n, what you do that initially there is a training period for the filter, adaptive filter. During this training period, what you are given is a target sequence, which we called desired response, say D of n. And you try to design the filter W0 to WP, so that the output Yn becomes a very close estimate of Dn. Now, for that matter, what do you do then? this algorithm it finds out at any point of time finds out the error, the actual amount of error between d n and y n. So, I want we want to minimize some measure of the error power. So, we take it say minimum mean square, we may be taking the error variance and try to minimize it. This error depends on 
filter weights because here is dn minus yn, yn depends on the choice of weights. So, this en will be fed back into another algorithm called adaptive algo that will take this en component and it will adjust the filter weights. That is filter weights will now become function of time w 0 n to w p n. Okay. So, at n equal to 0 they have some value that n equal to 1 another set of value. How these values change? This adaptive algorithm does this adjustment or change and this is done during the initial training phase only when d n is given. So, you adjust the filter weights by this adaptive algorithm. So, that y n becomes a better and still better and still better estimate of d n progressively as you go on filtering with changing weights. That is you adjust the weights in that sense that initially some way initial value of weights you take you get a y n measure the error fit it to the adaptive algorithm. Now, adjust the weights so that this y n is a better estimate of d n still not happy okay. fit back e n again fit e n back again to adaptive algorithm further adjust the weights and so on go on in this iteration till the training phase is over. So, training phase is once the training phase is over and your algorithm is correct and all we can assume this filters to be reaching very close to their optimum value. So, that y n is a good estimate of d n after this no d n will be given to you. You have to then trust the adaptive filter you have to tr you have to assume that this filter is indeed a good one and you have to take y n to be a really good estimate of d n. So, that you can do the job of d n by using y n only and then again after a while at a some of people time if you if, if you find that there is a possibility of you know I mean further training the requirement of further training because maybe the maybe the situation that was generating x n or d n that has changed from the external world we again go through another training phase. So, this training phase is executed from time to time. Okay. So, this is an adaptive filter in normal digital filters you only have one path x n pass through a filter if I are an IR and you have an output and once you design the filter coefficients based on your frequency response criterion they are fixed once for all this is not the case here you have got two processes that go on simultaneously one is called one is the filtering part which is common which gives us a convolution between x n and this weights. So, that output y is formed, but another part is the weight adjustment procedure okay, which takes the error e n and fed back to it and using some algorithm working on e n it adjusts the weights. Okay. There are two categories of algorithms very famous one is called LMS list mean square and this is called RLS recursive least squares. This is actually list mean square and this is recursive list squares. Again this five filter could be in a direct form or there is some other structure called lattice form and all that. In this course we will be considering mostly LMS algorithm. LMS algorithm was derived by the further figure of adaptive filter uh, Stanford professor named Withrow and it has stood the test of time. It is by far the simplest algorithm which is very easily realizable in hardware it is very robust to input noise it uh, converges okay, nicely and all that it has beautiful properties. Recursive least squares came up in early 90s early 80s and it converges it gives this optimal weights in a much shorter time than LMS, but then you know its structures are not so elegant in terms of architecture as LMS is okay, and sometimes they suffer from finite precision problems that if when implemented in finite registers you know finite precision based digital hardware then the truncation round of errors they go grow in this loop okay, and eventually they affect convergence. So, RLS also RLS is more difficult to understand nevertheless I will cover the basic of RLS, but initially my major attention will be focused on LMS. And I tell you beforehand that this course even though it is intensely practical because these adaptive filters are very very useful in practice this course will be basically focusing on the derivation of appropriate adaptive filter algorithms of one kind or another and also analyzing their performance. For that I would say that this is a mathematical course of course, the mathematics that is required will be developed in this course mostly two aspects of math will be required one is the general idea of probability and statistics rather stochastic processes whatever you require that that will develop also there will be some good deal of linear algebra and vector space theory which again I will develop in the course I mean as you go along in this course. So, that I am not presuming any math background as such, but then by repeat that by nature this is a mathematical course because we will be deriving we will be developing we will be deriving adaptive filter algorithms one after another and also analyzing them. Now, to give a few examples of adaptive filters consider 
first one is called adaptive line enhancer. In fact, if you see these books by Heikin or Farhang and all that, you will find in chapter 1 plenty of beautiful examples are given and in each example there could be one full semester course. What we do here? Suppose, you have got a sine wave, it is analog, but we will be discretizing it. Okay. We will be sampling it and discretizing it that way. Suppose, a waveform is given and you take its samples, so it becomes say some something like cosine omega naught n a times cosine omega naught n, but this is not a pure sinusoid. So, there is a lot of noise, there is some noise you know noise and the noise power could be very high. So, the signal power may be less noise power could be very high, could be high I mean SNR may not be that high. Now, suppose you want to filter out, you want to extract from this thing Z n is the noise and this is the signal, you want to extract a cosine omega naught n. What will you do normally? is to pass it through a bandpass filter, is not it? What kind of bandpass filter? You have very narrow pass band centered on omega naught and minus omega naught. This is the digital filter. So, this frequency is omega which is radian, you have to plot it from minus pi to pi, the filter transfer function, it is as you know it is periodic, any discrete, I mean any such transfer function is periodic over omega over a period of pi. If you pass this through this naturally the sinusoid and very little noise will be passed. So, far so good, but now suppose this frequency of the sinusoid is changing from time to time or gradually. In that case if you design the filter once for all and implement it after a while this filter will become useless, because it cannot once the frequency center frequency omega naught or carrier frequency omega naught signal frequency omega naught changes and goes beyond the pass band you will not, never be able to recover it. There we will need an adaptive filter which will be a bandpass filter, but which will use the adaptive mechanism to continuously adjust the center frequency of the bandpass filter. See from omega naught it goes to omega naught prime, omega naught goes to omega naught prime, the filter should then move to it goes to new frequency omega naught prime, this is this way, this way minus omega naught prime, so on and so forth. So, it will do it on its own, it is called a tunable bandpass filter. So, it will learn from the data, use that adaptive filter uh, adjustment in that loop, in that loop, in that context and readjust the filter coefficients by training, so that you get a new bandpass filter whose center frequency is at omega naught prime, so on and so forth. This is called line enhancer, line because you know whenever you have got a frequency like this, whenever you have got a sinusoidal frequency a signal, if you take its Fourier trans discrete time Fourier transform, you will get lines a cosine omega naught n, if you if you take its d t f t discrete time Fourier transform, this will you will get one impulse at omega naught, another at minus omega naught. Okay. This follows from basic DSP. So, these are lines, but these lines were buried in noise that time. So, this adaptive filter what it does it enhances the lines that is remove the noise and adaptively. This one good example of adaptive filter. Another example is eco canceller for telephone modem and data modem. In this modems what happens through one where a signal comes and there is a hybrid. The hybrid what it does whatever signal is comes here comes as an incoming signal, it diverts the signal to this side to the speaker, it is a speaker or source on this side. So, there is a speaker who is listening to the signal from this side, hybrid will transfer the signal to this side and if the speaker says something, it will divert it to this side. It will not allow this signal spoken by the speaker to come back by this line or vice versa, the signal which is uh, incoming to the hybrid that should entirely be diverted to the source to the speaker, so that he, has, he can hear it and nothing is diverted back down the process. This is not only useful in your uh, telephone system, but most importantly it is this kind of modems occur in data modem, where incoming data is to be sent to this side and again outgoing data from here is to be gain, diverted to this path. Now, ideally there is no problem, but you know most of the hybrids they from time to time have some kind of leakage. So, that part of this incoming signal whether it is speech or data 
instead of going fully to the source part of it comes back to this side. So, what basically comes out here is you can say d of n which is this fellow signal y n plus a part of this incoming signal which we call echo because that will go back to the speaker on this side who spoke the, those because this is coming from a hybrid here also and here is another source. So, this echo part of the leakage that the leakage to the hybrid that is what that is a part of the signal coming from speaker at this end that will go back to that speaker only after a delay. So, that will be an echo along with that echo the actual signal y n transmitted by the source generated by the source that also will go. So, what will go is d n equal to y n plus e n. Now, if it is purely telephonic conversation the e n of course, is a disturbance is an irritant it will create some problem, but still you know human beings are intelligent using their brain and all they can find they can somehow ignore that and listen to only y n, but it becomes a more acute problem if you are dealing with data modem where there is no human being and computers are processing receiving transmitting. That time the data that is transmitted through the, this line is not only it is never the one that should have been transmitted this extra component which you can say noise or disturbance is an interference that comes up. As a result we need to remove it. So, what we do there you model this hybrid as an FIR filter. Okay, model as FIR filter a very large order, large order. And suppose you know the filter, you then connect that filter here, filter. By this FIR filter, what you are modeling actually not the hybrid, but the leakage generation, eco generation mechanism that mechanism you are modeling by an FIR filter. In fact, if that mechanism is a linear system you can always approximate a by a very high order FIR filter any linear system linear time invariant system can be approximated by a, by, by a very large order FIR filter. Because if it is, it is IIR it is a stable system it will die out after a time. So, naturally the order is large you will take almost all the samples of the impulse response. So, if you put a large order FIR filter that will approximate or that model the echo generation process. Suppose I construct that here and then that will generate the same echo E n and I simply subtract it. So, what will go here is again y n echo is gone. Now, how do you do that? You do it adaptively it is because you the hybrid characteristics may change from I mean the echo generation process can differ can change from time to time and you change the hybrid again it changes. So, you cannot design the filter once for all. So, you use an adaptive mechanism this is your desired response and you try to match the desired response you know then it can be shown the best you can go is when this is equal to E n this is that is theory. So, this is that error okay. and that error the filter output and desired response the target sequence the, the difference is error that error will be put in that adaptive algorithm. A A adaptive filter algorithm this will go here and this will adjust the weights. Okay, this is called adaptive eco canceller. On this again plain key of work has taken place and this is only a very basic concept basic uh, scheme, but actually there are many you know detailed issues involved in eco cancellation you can read books on eco cancellation. Okay, there can be courses purely on eco cancellation. I am just giving a basic philosophy to generate motivation for this course. Then we take another example. Suppose you have got some antenna dipoles, antenna arrays like you know your TV antenna as you have seen you know that you are the antenna, some dipoles okay, array of dipoles. Normally, if you give some signals to them this array and there is some phase difference you adjust between the signal given here, 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 here and the distance is I think lambda by 2 lambda is the oil length or lambda by 4 some specified distance and phase difference given to the signal here and here I mean phase difference between the signal same signal is given to all the dipoles, but with the phase difference. Then what you can happen is you can have some kind of beam forming that is most of the energy if it is a transmitter antenna it might go in one direction in few directions and in these directions nothing. So, those in these directions I have null 
and in this direction we have got beam. Okay. If it is a receiver antenna, then again if you then you will not be giving signals, rather you will be receiving signals at these dipoles. You have if you multiply those signals, if you adjust the phases of the signals and then add them, again by that process the reverse will take place. You will be receiving signal mostly from this side or this side or this side, nothing from this side. There is a reverse. Okay, there is again beam forming. Now, since signals are complex signals in general, the signals are complex valued, you know, you know the phase, the phase are things, right? It is called J omega C T plus phi, these are typical and with some amplitude A, they are typical complex valued signal. So, if I have to adjust the phase of the signal, I will multiply by a complex number. So, from phi 1 to say I, from phi to I want to go to phi prime. So, I have to adjust it, it will multiply by u to the power j within bracket phi minus phi prime minus phi. Right? So, suppose you adjust these signals by multiplying by some weights. These weights can be complex numbers though, you can view as, as though they are like filter weights. Incoming signal is coming, you are multiplying by them some filter weights. Depending on the coefficients exactly, the phase difference that you are giving will be determined. And depending on that only the orientation, angle of the beams whether beam will be that main beams will be like this or it will be somewhat tilted that will be determined. Now, suppose that this is very useful the beam forming in mobile communication. Suppose in the same cell two users are given the same frequency then how to separate them because you are using the same band. So, in that case suppose one user is here another here one person is here another person is here I will adjust the weights such that a beam is formed in this direction null in this direction. So, that even though, though both are using same frequency band, I only listen to this guy and not to this guy. Okay, so, it is called spatial filtering separation. Those signals are coming on the same frequency band, I am not using just those kind of filters, you know low pass band pass, but it is a spatial filter. In the space, in one direction signals are allowed, in another, another direction signals are filtered out. And now, if both are in motion, if this fellow starts moving, I should be able to lock on to it. So, that means, I should adjust this filter coefficients adaptively. So, that my beam latches on to this guy and null latches on to this guy. This is the basic philosophy of smart antenna, which gives us to this special filtering. Okay. So, again you need to adaptively adjust the filter coefficients. Okay. There are plenty of such examples, you know, but uh, since my purpose of the course is not to take up examples. It is just to give some motivation, plenty of examples you can take a, have, take a look at the book by Heikin, by Farang and then by the book by Widrow, which is been much more uh, rich in terms of examples. Widrow's book is the first book on how to filter, plenty of copies available here. So, can have a look and uh, you know it, it, it discusses uh, many examples. Another thing which is particularly valid for communication systems, let us consider and that is what I considered somewhat in detail. I will be considering it is called adaptive channel equalization. You know, we all talk of digital communication. What in what you do in digital communication is this the uh, binary bits are coming 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, like that. Maybe you can say that look, I will handle 4 bits at a time. So, 4, another 4, another 4. So, 4 means how many combinations? 2 to the power 4, 16. So, you can determine say 16 discrete levels each level is called a symbol. Okay. So, there will be 16 different real valued voltage levels or maybe you can make complex valued. So, real part taking uh, 8 and imaginary part taking 8 or no 4 and 4, 4 into 4, okay. 4 into 4, 4 and 4, they can be the complex. Though in our course, I will assume to be real. So, 8 say 16 different voltage levels fine, but if you want to transmit it to the other, other side, it is not that I say that look level A and the other side receives it, because who will take it down the channel? Channel is a physical media which could be free space when you use antenna to antenna communication or which could be a wire, telephone wire, copper wire, which could be optical fiber, which could be say fluid like water. So, that for submarine to submarine, you know underwater communication takes place, this kind of things, but all physical media which constitutes communication channels, they are analog, analog systems, they are not discrete. They are all analog systems. You can give an analog waveform, cosine omega t, it will go. But if you say 1 or 2 or 4, nothing will go. They are only numbers. So, you need to have an analog waveform. 
So, for transmitting the symbols, the symbols are fixed, say 16 levels. The set of symbols is called alphabet S. S is a set of symbols. That is set of symbols. Huh? And you are transmitting every time one particular level from here. Okay. Some level. It can be this, it can be that, like that. But how to transmit it? Because just transmitting the number has no meaning. You have to have an analog waveform. So, what they do? They choose a basic pulse, say P of T. You can even take the height to be 1. What do you do? You trigger the pulse switch on here hmm. at this point switch on and you multiply the pulse by the particular symbol you want to transmit down. Okay. Suppose you are transmitting a symbol, your symbol sequence I denote by I n that is I 0 is the symbol transmitted at 0 th clock cycle or 0 th symbol cycle symbol period. So, you pick up some, some guy from this set transmit it. So, that time you multiply this p t by that. Okay. So, that means what you have is something like this height goes up to i 0, you are multiplying the pulse height was 1, now height goes up to i 0, you switched on here and when you receive it, you measure the pulse at this point where it is highest you receive okay fine i got i 0 is the height that means what you transmit it is i naught so i found out the symbol ideally this would be the case then after tau second tau is my symbol period after tau second you switch on the next pulse so it goes on like this and you multiply by the next symbol next symbol is i 1 because during the 0th symbol period you transmitted i 0 multiplied by the pulse after tau gap of tau second you take the next guy, next symbol, again somebody from this set is i 1, some level, one of those 16 levels, multiply this by the pulse by this. So, you switch on the pulse again here, multiply. Tau seconds earlier, you switched on the previous pulse. Something like this, i minus 1, dot 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 dot. Okay. So, what goes on the goes through the system is superimposition of this pulse. Now, the problem is if at the receiver I want to find out I naught, you told me to measure the sample at the center point capital T. But what I find already a future pulse already had started before T this point is arrived that is carrying the information of I 1. Already some contribution from previous pulse is coming which carries the internal information from i minus 1. They all have some contribution, is not it? This, this pulse has this much of contribution here. You see at t point this much and this pulse has this much. So, I will get the contribution from all of them, which means I will not only get i naught, I will get other components. It is a mixed up thing. So, I am lost. I cannot find out because this interference from future and past symbols are coming because of the overlapping of the pulses. You can say that suppose and not only that I want to transmit faster and faster. So, this tau will be made narrower and narrower smaller. The moment you switch on immediately after that switch on another one immediately after that switch on another one. So, there will be overlap of many pulses. Pulses are very close to each other now not very far away because you are not waiting you are transmitting again transmitting again transmitting again transmitting is not it. So, there is very very closely spaced which means there will be too much of interference from future symbols and past symbols. One thing you can say that look as you are decreasing tau transmitting fast, you also compress the pulse, so that they do not come close to each other. But I cannot compress the pulse, the moment you compress the pulse, if you shrink in time domain, it will require more bandwidth, but you have got a band limit, you cannot occupy consume more band, more bandwidth than is given. So, that I cannot touch this, I have to bear with, I have to bear this, I have to withstand this interstable interface, so do something to avoid it, is not it. So, what they do is this, they design the pulse, so that when you have sampling this, that time this fellow should go through 0 or this fellow also should go through 0. Other fellows also to the right and to the left should have should go through 0. So, they do not interfere then. If that, that means, after all this pulse also this one, this also this one, this also this one, same pulse only. 
that means this pulse should be such that at t it should have value 1 then from t if you go tau seconds to the left like this point from this center point how much you go to the left tau is not it. So, if you go tau to the left t minus tau it should have a 0. If you go tau to the right t plus tau it should have a 0 like this something like this. Okay. T plus tau, T plus 2 tau, T minus tau, T minus 2 tau like that. So, all these fellows will have 0 crossing there. This kind of pulses which satisfy this 0 crossing this called Nyquist pulses. This property is actually the 0 crossing property. We enforce this 0 forcing condition on the pulse by this design. This will be fine. If we design the pulse is a transmit like this, there is no problem. I sample at T, I get back this. I sample at T plus tau, I get back this. So, on and so forth. Problem is the channel is not an ideal channel channel has got its own distorting influence, channel is band limited, for instance a telephone wire has a very bad frequency response, it is not flat, band limited and also very bad frequency response. Okay. So, naturally the pulse will get distorted, pulse P t will pass through the channel, channel has an impulse response H t and the convolution between the two will give you a new pulse P prime t, this pulse P t will get distorted. P t had the 0 forcing satisfied, but after distortion 0 forcing will be gone. So, I will be back to this again, is not it? And therefore, there will be interference. What kind of interference? That if you are in the if you are somewhere here, you are taking out the n th symbol n th. So, the sampling point will be n tau plus t n was 0 for the 0 s, it was only t, then t plus tau, t plus 2 tau, t plus n tau for the n s symbol. So, I should have a i of n only, is not it? But what is happening, instead of having this i of n, the pulse p prime t is no longer p t. So, its height itself is not 1, height itself is not, it is a kind of distorted version of this. That get, got multiplied by i n, so you will get something here of that distorted pulse maybe something like this you know something like this but distorted. Then again you will have a component here you will have a component from this guy they will not have 0 crossing at this point because p prime t is not p t. So, you will have some contribution from the next symbol from the previous symbol next to next symbol from the previous to previous symbol and all that when you measure the net height what will get that is if you measure the net height and you call it r n ideally you want r n to be i n, but you will not only get you will get i n times the new height which is not 1. So, some 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 constant times i n that constant you can call h 0 say h 0 some constant into i n and then some constant times next sample some constant times the previous sample. So, h 1 times previous sample h minus 1 times next sample. So, I both, both side. Okay. So, this gives rise to a discrete time model and this is a non causal model because contribution is coming from future and past physical channel is causal, but the model is this is only a model equivalent discrete time model came out of this analysis that is non causal because contribution from future and past both are coming. Okay. So, then you generate this is my channel model h 2 h 1 h 2 h minus 1 h minus like that you transmit it r n this is what you are receiving. Okay. Also along with this the channel is noisy, so noise signal also gets added, but you what we do normally we combine the net effect of the noise and show it as a separate noise component being added here. Noise is there all along the line, but we take out the net effect of noise as a single source of noise and whatever you comes get this to that we add the noise this is a model. So, this suppose noise is Zn this is what you receive this is the signal part the noise part and this is what you receive maybe this is the Xn purpose is how to get back 
or n from x n for the time being assume no z n for the time being. Then suppose h n is h n has got z transform h z. Hmm. Then if I pass this on the receiver side, this is the receiver side. If I pass it through a system 1 by h z or n through h n give you s n that is in terms of z transform capital R z into capital H z that gave you s z. So, s z into 1 by z will give you r n back r z back if there is no noise otherwise there will be a contribution of noise. So, this is the basic equalizer we have to construct this. Now, there is one there are certain uh, details about this let me just quickly tell you h n what what is h n like how did h n come up but again we have a look at this figure h 0 came from this central value of the pulse h 1 came from this this pulse which was passing through which was having this value. So, it came from this value of the if p prime t is uh, suppose p prime t is this something like this, this central value is no longer 1, whatever is the value that much was h 0. Then if you go tau to the left, whatever is the value of the pulse that was h 1, h minus 1 because that got multiplied by the symbol, whatever is the value on this side that was h 1 that got multiplied by because you see from the from the from behind this side is coming in this side, from the right side this side is coming is not it. So, this much height was here and that was my h minus 1 because this this pulse corresponds to this symbol similarly so like that. Okay. So, what are this h 0 h 1 h 2 they are just values of the pulse at this point this point maybe here here like that. So, you understand that they will progressively die out obviously, pulses which are situated very far away they cannot overlap is it only nearby you want. So, as you increase go on taking h of n for higher and higher n finally, it will die out. So, h n will be a dying out sequence. Typically, it could be like this may be you take it up to some value say minus m and up plus m and then zeros. So, if you take this h n, so this is typical h n. So, h n is f i r, h n is f i r only thing is it is non causal, it does not matter. If it is a f i r, you will have h z is a z transform, z transform will have only zeros because f i r filter only has zeros, no poles, is not it. So, that means 1 by h z has the problem, it has only poles, and there comes the problem of causality stability. Poles must lie within unit circle, then only it is causal and stable but I have no guarantee because they are coming from the channel I am not controlling the channel. So, sometimes in the most general case some poles could be inside unit circle some poles could be outside unit circle which means system is stable, but it is non causal. Okay. This system is stable, but it is non causal. So, 1 by h z this system if you if, if its impulse response is h prime n this will be stable, but non causal. So, that means h prime n could be something like this it will go in either direction because non causal, but it is stable for any stable system you know impulse response if you take take the mod value and go on adding it has to be finite that is the condition. So, then this also should die down if it does not die down if it remains steady it will never be summable for a stable system impulse response should be absolutely summable that is if you take the absolute value mod value and go on adding finally, it will be finite that can happen only if this dies out if it remains constant you go on adding it goes on increasing is not it. So, if it dies out say so something like this up to here say minus capital N then on this side up to N. This is what I have to design here, but problem is this is non causal I cannot implement it non causal system means contribution for future comes to generate present which cannot be done it becomes causal if the origin were here. So, what I do I take the same data 
but apply a shift on it to the right by how many points capital N points. So, that this guy goes here then it becomes causal and shifting to the right by n means in z domain I multiply by this. So, this filter I construct what is the problem what is the output then output will be not what uh, you got when it was 1 by 8 z that time strictly R n, but you are delaying means R n also what you get that also will get delayed. Suppose you have got a transfer function a z you are input is x n output is y n you say instead of a z I call it a z into z to the power minus 2. Then what is the output earlier output was y z was a z into x z that was y z now it is a z into z to the power minus 2 into x z. So, z to the power minus 2 x z means delayed input and therefore, output also will be delayed by the same amount. So, that means what you get here is not R n, but R n minus capital N in the absence of noise, which is ok for me because this delay I do not care as long as correctness of data is present. As long as I get the same data, but only after a delay of n, n clock cycle I do not care. Problem here is so far so good this is called a linear equalizer. Only thing is to know capital H z I must know what a small h n I must know what is capital H z and therefore, I can take the reciprocal, but who will give me h n where from h n came up it came up from not p t which was known to me, but p prime t which basically is a combined effect of the channel and the pulse the convolution between p t and h t. So, if I know the channel it is ok if I do not know the channel I do not know p prime t and moreover channel may be changing its characteristics h t may be something now something else after a while. So, p prime t there is no guarantee of you know remaining fixed of a fixed shape. So, since I do not know p prime t I do not know those values h 0 h 1 and all that. So, that means I have to every time after some you know every half an hour or 20 minute or 15 minute I have to train. So, that I learn from the incoming data about this channel and adjust accordingly. So, what we do in equalizer there is you know maybe say after every half an hour there is a period of training hand checking period that time transmitter transmits R n which is a known sequence universally fixed known standard sequence called pilot sequence which the transmit receiver also knows. So, receiver knows what is transmitted. So, receiver only finds out some x n and it gives it to a filter adaptive filter may be w 0 to say w p this output it want to be what was transmitted that delayed by n transmitted sequence is suppose d of n where that is known. So, it tries to it knows what is d n where what is transmitted transmitted that is universally known that sequence a pilot sequence call it d of n desired response d of n it just delays it by this amount capital n and finds out the error use it in an adaptive algorithm this is that adaptive filter philosophy and go on adjusting it. That means, this output it is trying to bring as close as possible to this. So, that this filter finally becomes really something like this. So, that this is indeed end cycle delayed version of what was transmitted till that happens it goes on training it and if you give a sufficiently long training period it will indeed be the best one very close to this and this output will indeed be very close to this. Then training is over you rely on this for a while then maybe after some time whether needed or needed go through the training again like that this is called adaptive equalizer. Okay. this adaptive equalizer and uh, now point is if you take the effect of noise then what happens this noise now is present here z n goes through this you can call this entire thing as h prime z it goes through this. So, in the output there will be a component now suppose there is no adaptation adaptation is done so, I have got the trained ones good ones I am living with them, but that will also process the noise. So, in the output there will be a noise component, but that is ok because you know ultimately I will pass it through a hard decision device because after all 
you transmit a sequence of samples, but samples were not taking any arbitrary value, one of those 16 levels, pre-designed, fixed. So, you have a hard decision device, look at the value here and find out which level it is closest to, assign that here. That will also some effect of noise will go. Suppose there are two levels at this kind of gap, okay. suppose there is a level like 1 volt, 2 volt, 3 volt. You received, you would have got 2 here, but because of knowledge, no, noise, it becomes 2.2. But so what? Even for 2.2, you can say that it is very close to 2. So, I equate it to 2, which means the effect of that 0.2 volt noise effect will disappear. So, noise will be largely filtered out by the hard and device. Now, this kind of equalizers had one problem sometimes. You know, sometimes this channel AZ shows the presence of zeros close to unit circle. AZ for this channel. Suppose it has got a 0, say z minus z naught into say remaining part h 1 z, this z naught could be very close to unit circle. Suppose here, the unit circle. So, what is h e to the power g omega? If you take the Fourier e to the power g omega minus z naught into h 1 e to the power g omega, is not it? Omega will go from say 0 and take a round go up to 2 pi periodic over 2 pi, when omega takes this much. So, there are two lines are aligned, two phasors are aligned and that time the difference between the two will be this much. Initially, when omega was 0, this was one phasor, this was one phasor, so difference was this much which has a good magnitude. But as omega goes on increasing, increasing, increasing like that, when you reach here, the difference becomes minimum. And if it is really very small, then this part has very small magnitude. So, if you take its mod and plot it, that at omega equal to, if you call it omega naught, there will be a very low magnitude, there will be dip, is not it? There will be spectral dips or spectral nulls, something like this at omega naught, like that dot 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 at pi minus pi, this for h to the power j omega. Okay. Now, this system, the equalizer is reciprocal of that. So, that means at omega naught and minus omega naught, the equalizer will have peaks and this noise which does not go through H n, it only goes through this. So, this will be amplified and there will be huge noise here, this is called noise enhancement effect. This enhanced noise will be eliminated for those kind of situations, this occur frequently in mobile communication, the spectral null phenomenon. For that this equalizer is not so good, then there is something called decision feedback equalizer. I just briefly tell you what is done there very briefly. You design, suppose this is your channel H n the receiver side for the time being I mean I am adding the noise, but for the time being forget the noise. This is the receiver side you design one FIR filter say a G n it is called FFF feed forward filter. So, that when you cascade the two resulting thing becomes causal H n was non causal in general like you know contribution of a future and past, but when you design the two net effect net cascade of the two becomes causal that is if H 1 n is a convolution between the two, there is the equivalent system, forget the noise part, the equivalent system is a convolution between the two, it should be like this. Say some value, then maybe say A, maybe B, maybe C, maybe then after the 0, after all both are FIR, so convolved will be FIR. Okay. So, I take only 3 say. You can also adjust the gain here, so that this this leading coefficient is 1, if it is not 1, suppose it is 10, you can divide this every, everything by 10. So, this becomes 1, this is normalized to 1, then A, B, C. So, this is the net thing. What you do is, suppose I am going in the backward way, this is your, this is where your output decision will come up, output decision that is what was transmitted, suppose. Now, this I call V n, if you pass it through a delay and suppose you assume that so far or at least for last 3 cycles correct decisions were made by hook or crook or somebody that is V n minus 1, V n minus 2, V n minus 3 are correct. What I will do then, if I take this V n minus 1, then multiply it by A, then pass it through a delay, so it is V minus 2 multiplied by the same B and again pass it through a delay multiplied by C, 
and add them, what will happen? H 1 n is a net thing that was convolved with this side R n, is not it? That was convolved with R n. In fact, uh, R n ok, convolved with R n ok. So, H 1 n convolved with R n. What is the con how, how you know how to do the convolution? You have to reverse it and then shift. So, you, if you reverse it A goes here, B goes here, C goes here and then go on shifting this way or that way depending on the n at which you want to carry out the convolution. So, suppose you want to carry out the convolution at uh, nth, nth point. So, you have to take 1 here then A B C and this you go on with this sequence R n, R n will be R n here, R n minus 1 here dot dot dot. You multiply top to bottom sample wise and add that is convolution. If you do that, then you get what is obtained here, because these two together was H 1 n, R n input. So, what you get here is what you obtain by convolution, what is that? R n times 1, this 1, R n times 1 plus a times r n minus 1, b times r n minus 2, c times r n minus 3. What you get here are a times v n minus 1, but I am assuming v n minus 1 is same as r n minus 1, correct decision was made. So, what you get here is a times r n minus 1 itself, what you get here is v times r n minus 2 itself, correct decision. So, v n minus 2, 1 delay 1 delay, so v n minus 2, I am saying v n minus 2 and r n minus 2 are same, correct decision was taken. And then here, c times this is your r n minus 3, because it is v n minus 3, but I am saying that also was correct decision. Suppose it is so. So, this 3 means this part, this part, this part a into r n minus 1, b into r n minus 2, c into r n minus 3, that part is coming out here. If I take this and subtract, what I am left out is this component r n into 1. So, that goes here and r n is what I want and that goes through this device that will give me r n only. So, for in a cycle also correct decision is made and therefore, in future cycles also like that. And this time the noise does not go through a filter which is inverse of the channel. So, the peak phenomena does not occur here. So, the noise enhancement phenomena does not occur. This is called decision feedback equalizer. Again here, if you know H n then only you can first construct G n so that it is causal and once you know this overall H 1 n then only you know A B C you can construct this. So, you to construct these two filters, you need channel knowledge, but I told you channel knowledge may not always be available. So, here also you can have an adaptive mechanism, so that this filter coefficients are actually obtained from the incoming data by an adaptive algorithm that is called adaptive decision field equalizer. Okay. I think uh, that is enough for today. I suggest that uh, you go through these, these examples and also take the book by Hakin and uh, also Farang take for that matter many other examples like say adaptive uh, linear prediction, okay, adaptive interference collection, cancellation. Okay, there are plenty of uh, examples and you know very nice is thing as we can do sometime late in this course, you can run some basic program and implement these filters, MATLAB based very simple and you see how beautifully they work. Okay. So, that is all for today. So, I would suggest that uh, we begin from this from the next class. Thank you. Thank you very much.